Hey everybody, welcome to my lesson on understanding the SVG Viewbox and Viewport. The SVG Viewbox allows us to specify a rectangular region to display inside our SVG Viewport. Here you can see the same SVG artwork with different Viewbox settings. Changing the Viewbox allows us to pan and zoom to a specific region of the SVG. And what's extra cool about the SVG view box is that it can be easily animated with GSAP. However, in order to understand the view box, we must also know a bit about the viewport. There have been quite a few articles written on these two concepts, and you'll usually come across things that will explain how SVG is an infinite canvas, the viewport acts like a window to your SVG, the view box acts like a telescope that can zoom and pan, the SVG has multiple coordinate systems, and you'll use something called preserve aspect ratio when the viewport and view box have different aspect ratios. And although these articles are helpful, it can be a bit overwhelming to sort of consume all of this at once. So today I'm gonna to take some liberties and really focus on practical usage over technical accuracy. So in very basic terms, the viewport sets the dimensions or size of your SVG artwork. The viewport is defined based on the width and height attributes of the SVG. The view box defines a rectangular portion of the SVG canvas to be shown within the confines of the viewport. The view box size and position is defined using a string of X, Y, width and height values as I've highlighted here. And again, right now it might be confusing. They might sound like the same thing but I'm going to show you exactly how they work together. Let's get going. I wanna start off today in Boxy SVG, just exploring our artwork to make it very clear that our artwork is in this grid and each square with each animal is 100 by 100 pixels, giving us a full size image of 200 by 200. But if we reset the zoom, you'll get an idea of how this would look at its native size. But of course, since we're using SVG, everything scales amazingly. Now let's hop on over to CodePen to examine the viewbox and viewport. All right, so now I have that SVG here in CodePen. It looks beautiful. And I wanna point out that there is a ton of SVG code here for all the gradients, shapes, path data, like literally thousands of lines, all right? You probably said, wow, that fish looks beautiful. Well, you know what? It takes a lot of instructions to draw that fish and they're all here on the right. So I'm not going to scroll through all of it, but from what we've learned in this course before, you sort of know what these different tags do. So let's jump up to the top and focus somewhere that we haven't spent a lot of time. And that's the SVG tag itself. Right now I have it stripped down to just this viewbox attribute. And with only a viewbox attribute, I wanna show you that if I resize my preview over there, notice how the artwork gets stretched out, okay? It's going to change size to always fill in the browser window. And if we revisit our viewport definition that says that it sets the dimensions of your SVG artwork and it's defined by the width and height attributes, you'll see here that of course our SVG does not have any width and height attributes. So this is sort of the default behavior. If you don't provide width and height, it's going to stretch to fill its containing element, which in this case is the body. So what I'm going to do is give it a width of 200 and height of 200. And now you'll see that it pretty much or exactly matches the size that it was designed at in Boxy SVG. So again, this width and height are being used to set our viewport, which is the size of our SVG artwork. And that viewport size is now locked in at 200 pixels by 200 pixels, so it's not going to resize with the browser window. Next, we'll be exploring the SVG view box. All right, so to get into the view box, what I'm gonna do is get rid of the viewport fixed width and height, which brings us back to the SVG being as wide as the containing body element. And let's focus on these view box settings. Back to our definition, the view box defines a rectangular portion of the SVG canvas to be shown within the confines of the viewport. So right now our viewport is as wide as the body, 
but we're using these numbers here to dictate a rectangular portion that's going to be displayed starting at x, y coordinates of 0, 0, and that rectangle is going to be 200 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall, which clearly allows us to see all four of the 100 by 100 squares in our grid. Now, instead of having the view box start at 0, 0, what I'm going to do is start it at 100 pixels over and 100 pixels down, and then I'm going to make a square that's 100 pixels wide and 100 pixels tall. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of what we have here and do 100, 100, 100, 100. And look what we get, just the fish. This is the true beauty of the view box. Whatever is inside this rectangle here is crammed within the confines of the view port. And to make this point really clear, I can of course resize the viewport and we're still gonna see only what's in that 100 by 100 square grid there defined by the view box. Likewise, I can go back here and set the width equal to 200 and height equal to 200. And now you'll see that we have a 100 by 100 square scaled up to a 200 by 200 viewport. And I'm hoping by now these concepts are starting to gel. I know it can be a little bit confusing, but if I were to simplify things even further, I would say the view box defines the coordinates of what you see, and the viewport is the size of what you see. Now again, this is an oversimplification, and what's happening behind the scenes is actually a bit more complex, but I just wanna keep things really simple in this introduction, as we'll be diving further into these concepts in the future, but I really wanna wrap up and show you how we can animate the view box. All right, back in CodePen here, I freshened the file up with this friendly elephant, because that cat was giving me some problems. More on that later. All you need to know now though is that we have our fixed width and height and we have a class of demo on the SVG. We're going to use a demo variable to target the element with a class of demo and I have a timeline ready to go with a default duration of one for each animation. So let's say we want to animate the view box so that we can see the elephant really big. Well we would use 0, 0, 100 wide, 100 tall. So let's go ahead and add a dot to tween here and we're going to target the demo and we're going to be using the attribute plugin in order to target the view box attribute and let me just pound in that 0, 0, 100, 100. Ooh, that was nice. We can use GS Dev Tools to slide back to the beginning and now we can see that as the view box gets animated it gives us a zoom effect into that awesome elephant. Once I've zoomed in, I could, you know, maybe do a copy here and paste, and I'll update the values to maybe bring the view box down to 0, 100. And now we zoom in and go to the owl. So back to the beginning, we zoom into the elephant and then slide down to see the owl. So by changing the view box, we can pan and zoom around our SVG artwork. Now to get to the squirrel up in the top right hand corner, I'm going to copy and paste this tween here. I'm going to need an X of 100 and a Y of 0. That's cool. And to finish up, let me just do a little surprise for you. Once we've panned and zoomed around the image, I think we should show the dog. Yes, the dog. I'm going to add another tween in here. And for the view box, I'm going to use these values of 109, 60, 1, 3. What? Where'd that dog come from? Well, let's zoom out. And guess what? That dog all along has been hiding in the hands of that squirrel. And look how crisp, clean, and cheerful he is. Ain't that cool? So I'm hoping now that this basic introduction to Viewbox and Viewport has helped those concepts sink in. I strongly recommend that you take some SVGs and experiment with your own Viewbox and Viewport values. At the very least, take the finished demo from today, fork it, and type in some of your own values, create your own animation, and just have some fun exploring. 
In the next video, we're going to dive deep into preserve aspect ratio, where we get to control how the SVG is presented when the view box and viewport have different aspect ratios. It's a tricky concept, but don't worry, I'm going to go easy on you. See you in the next video. If you want to master Greensock animation, visit creativecodingclub.com. Access over 200 lessons with 40 hours of HT video, tons of demos, and get new lessons weekly for only $2.95 a month. Visit creativecodingclub.com for more.